All right, uh, this is gonna be a follow-up video to my previous one where I went over how to set up asset validators in Unreal. And in this one, I just wanted to uh, show how to do a little bit more advanced version in case anyone was curious, because I did mention it in the previous one. Uh, so for this video, we're gonna look at how to set up an asset validator for textures and specifically how to set them up for uh, textures on checking the individual compression settings within the texture to make sure that it's matching uh, whatever that texture is. So making sure that a normal map is set to uh, normal map compression and not set to default or something like that because that can cause a lot of bugs, it can screw up a lot of your materials, and it's not necessarily the most obvious thing. So sometimes you get graphical bugs and you're not sure what's causing them, and it's just because a texture is at the wrong compression setting and it's throwing a flag in your master material, but it's not causing a big error and it's just not fun to fix. So this is a good way to avoid small bugs like that. And it doesn't take a lot of time. So let's go ahead and go in. Uh, so to start out, I just went ahead and made a texture validator in the same way as the static mesh validator and material validator from the last video. Um, so I'll dive into this real quick. Uh, it's the same as the previous ones. The only difference is that we're casting to a texture instead of a material or a static mesh. And the prefix is capital T underscore, which is a common naming convention for textures. Uh, traditionally with textures, you do uh, capital T underscore as the prefix to do donate that it's uh, a texture. And then you'll do a suffix to say, what kind of texture is it? Is it a normal map? Is it a mask? And so on. Uh, so if you're curious on how to set something like this up and you haven't seen my previous video, I'll just go ahead and link that in the video description just so that way you have easy access to it. And yeah, let's go ahead and uh, just test this real quick just to see and make sure that it's working correctly. So in here, I just have a mega scans material with three textures, all of which have capital T underscore. So if I just go ahead and right click on this and validate the assets, click yes, you can see that we checked four assets and all four passed. However, if we were to check, let's say, the textures for this UE4 uh, mannequin arms, uh, none of them have capital T underscore, so these will fail, or at least they should. So let's make sure that this is working before we continue. And you can see that we had some failures. So this validator is working as intended, and we can go ahead and make our new one. And I think for this example, we'll go ahead and make one that checks normal maps. And yeah, let's do it. So we start out uh, the same way as last time, editor utilities, editor utility blueprint, and we're gonna look for validator. And we want editor validator base, click that, select. And we're gonna type UBP underscore uh, normal map validator. All right, open that up. And we're gonna start the same way as last time. Uh, we're gonna override the can validate asset function that's built in and we're gonna drag out and we want to take the in asset and we actually want to cast to texture because normal maps are just textures. There's not really a normal map uh, asset type. And then we want to go ahead and convert this to a pure cast. And in the previous one, we would just hook up the success right here. So if it casts to it, but we actually want to check more stuff about this texture other than just if it's a texture. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that real quick, just with an alt click. And we actually want to dive into the texture and get its name. And the reason we're doing this is we actually want to check the suffix. So we want to see if this texture ends with underscore N, because if so, that's how our developers say this is a normal map. So we're going to say, is this a texture? Yes. Is it a normal map? Yes. If it is, then let's go ahead and validate that it has the correct compression settings. So from here, we want to search for ends with. All right, so this will check the suffix. And just like before, we want to promote this to a variable just for cleanliness. And we'll just call it suffix. And just drag this down here. And we want this to be case sensitive. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit compile. And now we can put in our suffix, which is gonna be underscore n. All right, compile. And from here, uh, we actually wanna throw in a branch. Uh, we could just plug this right in here, 
but at that point we're not checking to see if the cast is successful so I like to just go ahead and add an additional step so we're gonna go ahead and make sure that the cast is successful and then if it is we're gonna go ahead and return this and actually in this case let's invert this and do it this way and that's just a bit of personal preference on this really because I want the return value to be the success on the texture uh, and less so if the uh, suffix is underscore n so let's go ahead and save that I'm gonna hit compile and actually I just accidentally created a new function there let me delete that habits uh, so I'm going to go ahead and override, and now we want validate loaded asset. And for this, we're actually going to start by doing another cast, and specifically cast to texture. And we're essentially casting to the same one we've already casted to, even though it's the in asset, so it's casting to itself. And this isn't the most optimal thing, but this isn't going to run at runtime, uh, so it's not too bad of a practice in this case. Uh, the main reason we're doing this is because we actually need to get as texture again. You wouldn't be able to get the texture compression settings off of in asset because it's not seeing it as a texture anymore. Uh, and this is just kind of the cleanest way to do it. All right, so as texture, we want to get uh, the compression settings. All right, and the first thing we want to check is, are the compression settings equal to the ones we want? So we can go ahead and do an equal sign, and we want equal to enum. And from here, we'll actually get a drop-down list of the possible compression settings. And in this case, we want normal map, because we want our normal maps set to normal map. All right, I'm going to drag this return node out, and I'm going to go ahead and do a branch. Hook the branch up, and then we're going to say if this is true, and then we're going to go ahead and say asset passes, and we're going to plug asset passes into our return node, set the return node to valid, so if the asset passes, it's valid, same as last time, and for the in asset, we're just going to drag off and type in in asset, and there we go. So that part is now done, now we have to set up the uh, false, so if this fails, and I forgot to hook up my boolean, there we go. So if it fails, then we want to do asset fails. And then we want to copy that return node. Go ahead and plug it in. Just align these real quick. And we're going to go ahead and say invalid if it fails. And for our validation errors, we want to just type in validation errors, get validation errors. So this just provides the standard Unreal errors that'll get printed if this happens. And then for the in asset, we want our get in asset. Okay, now for the message, uh, it's gonna be similar to last time. We're gonna do a format text. And this way we can have different pins that we can uh, essentially program. And we're going to say that uh, text, uh, let's see, texture has incorrect uh, compression settings. And we're going to go ahead and put in what it read. So currently, and then we're going to do this Sorry about that. so two curly braces in between two apostrophes and for this we're going to go ahead and put uh, let's say current uh, comp and then we're going to add another one but before that we should uh, we should put uh, should be all right and then we're going to add the curly braces again, and we're going to put uh, correct uh, setting. So for this, all we're going to do is we're going to take the compression settings that it pulled from the texture and plug them into the current one. So actually, we need to convert to string. 
Uh, let's say make a uh, literal string. I'm gonna plug this in. We're gonna plug that in there. So this is gonna put uh, in that current uh, current comp, so current compression setting. Uh, it's going to plug in whatever compression setting the texture is currently set as. And then for for the correct setting, we're gonna also make literal string. And for this one, we're going to essentially just copy what's in here. So for this, we're gonna put normal map. And then we're just gonna go ahead and put in the same additional text here for, you know, direct X and so on. Uh, BC5 on DX11. Okay. So this all looks good to me. So I think we can go ahead and compile. And we're going to save. And just like before, we actually have to restart the editor because asset validators only get registered with the engine on engine startup, not on save. So I'm going to go ahead and restart the editor and I'll be right back. All right, uh, we're back, the engine is restarted. So this normal map validator should be working now. So let's go ahead and test it. So I'm gonna go into this mega scans folder and I'm gonna go ahead and validate this normal map. So right click on it and we should just be able to validate straight on the texture, I believe. Yep, maybe not. So let's just go ahead and validate the folder. All right, you can see that everything passed, but if I go ahead and open up this normal map, it is set correctly at the moment. However, if I just change this to, let's say default and hit save, you can see that upon trying to save this file, uh, we immediately threw an error and we can see that uh, currently uh, it's set to default and should be normal map for the compression setting. So we can see that this validator is now working. And this is a very just beneficial thing to set up in terms of asset validation because the amount of bugs I have seen just on game projects that have happened just due to uh, something being the wrong compression setting for a texture and the master material is expecting this compression setting, uh, it, too many to count. It happens all the time and the only uh, error you're ever going to see is in the material instance. You'll see a small little error uh, on the material instance, but it's not going to throw any big errors. It's just going to cause rendering bugs and you're going to be wondering why they're happening. So just setting up something like this is going to just dramatically reduce the amount of small bugs like that and can really just speed up production, to be honest. So uh, I think they're worth building in and I hope this was helpful. I know it wasn't the most... Uh, easy to follow thing, but hopefully, uh, hopefully it was helpful. And if you enjoyed the video, go ahead, hit the like button, comment, subscribe, any of that stuff. And yeah, if you want to see more, just go ahead and, uh, leave a comment if you want, just to, uh, let me know other topics you might be interested in or other things you'd like me to cover. Happy to make more videos. I find them pretty fun to make and I'm just kind of making them for fun at the moment. So yeah, if that interests you, go ahead and leave a comment. And with that, uh, thanks for watching and have a nice night.